Hello, this is a staff guide for lateral flow testing. You'll be pleased to know there is also a PowerPoint version that you can just look at your own leisure without having to listen to me. So, lateral testing for staff has been introduced because what we know so far is that one in three people are asymptomatic. They are carrying the virus, able to spread it, but are not showing symptoms. So it's been suggested that by school staff, and by school staff we mean any member of our community, from midday meal supervisors, to heads of schools, to library managers, to cleaners, to teachers, office staff, kitchen staff and so on, are entitled to these tests. We are knowing that basically it is hoped it will break the transmission flow. Every staff member may pick up a pack of seven lateral tests to conduct at home and there will be more to follow. However, we are currently asking only for those staff who are working with inside the school building to collect and use these. Others of you will be able to opt in later to collect tests as and when necessary. These tests are only for our staff members. I know it's very tempting to want to share them with friends and family, but please do not. Testing is not mandatory. If you do not wish to undertake the test, that's absolutely fine and you will not in any way be prevented from coming into school. We're going to ask that staff who opt into this scheme actually take this test on Sunday and Wednesday evenings. Now this goes against government guidance which has suggested the mornings but this is purely operational. If all of you were to test positive on a Monday morning we would find it very difficult to replace staff at such short notice. These packs for staff who will be in school from week beginning the 1st of February can be collected this Friday. Karen will be in the school hall between 8 and 8.30 and 11.30 and 12.30 where you'll be able to collect these tests. She will then be in the hall again on Friday the 12th of February for those of you who are coming in school after that point. Should there be any reason why somebody has missed collection of tests and requires them, can you ring Karen and make an appointment to come and collect these? We're going to operate in terms of risk assessment, a one way system when collecting. Staff are going to be asked to come in via the external door of the hall, by the kitchen. They will obviously sanitise hands on entry, wear a face covering and remember to socially distance. They will then come up to the collection desk where Karen will be based when called, collect their test, sanitise hands on the way out and leave via the double doors. When you've got your test, we would suggest before actually starting the testing, you basically read the leaflet. But just some key tips really. These tests must be stored in a cool place but not outside or the fridge and do not store them in direct sunlight. Once you've actually stored them, I would read the guidance leaflet and there is a YouTube video with a link here which explains step by step how to use these tests. We're also providing with you, for you a paper version of how to administer the tests. Key points, do not eat or drink 30 minutes prior to taking the test. Before you take the test, you're going to wash your hands and it's suggested that you cough and blow nose. Then you're basically self swabbing yourself, swabbing each uh, tonsils four times. Apparently, if you're gagging, you're doing it correctly, so it will feel slightly uncomfortable. Then you take the same swab, enter it into a nostril. Again, it's going up something like two and a half centimetres. It's slightly uncomfortable. You're going to move that round your nostril three times or so. If you have a piercing, it's recommended that you use the opposite nostril. Likewise, it's also suggested if you've recently had a nosebleed, to try to use the nostril where you haven't had the nosebleed in. Results. Basically, when you collect your kit, you will also be given guidance, but a privacy notice which you must read, because basically data is going to be collected and kept for these results. There are two forms of data that are going to be kept. One is you will have to email results into Karen and she will have a school paper based register and you will also need to be either ringing 119 or using the government email to record your results every time you take a test.
with if it's positive or negative. If you have a void test, you should undertake a second test using a test from the batch. If this is also void at this point, stop. You may have a batch which is defected. So again, you're going to report this to Karen who will contact the DfE about this, but you should at this point book a PCR test because it may be indicative of the fact that you do have the virus. If you have a positive test, and we very much hope you don't, you're going to follow the basic advice of isolating. You then book a PCR test immediately and you're going to contact a member of S SLT. Now, you may have clinical and non-clinical instances when taking the test. Again, I hope you don't. Clinical instrument instance will be, for example, the swab break breaks and there is bleeding or allergic reaction. Very rare are allergic reactions or any of these effects. However, if you have, please report them on the coronavirus yellow card system that's noted here. If you have non-clinical instance, for example, broken bits or broken kits, bits missing, you're going to call 119. But in the first instance, I will just hopefully use another test. Frequently asked questions. Basically, positive test results are 99.7% accurate. Tests are 83% accurate. Currently, we're still being advised to do the test even if you've had the vaccine. However, it is suggested currently that if you have had coronavirus in the last 90 days, that taking the test during this time may lead to a positive result, even though you may not be. So that might be something that you want to check. They're OK for people who have got latex allergies. They're also OK for pregnancy and for any underlying health issues to be used. Same advice as usual, if you are showing symptoms, don't use one of these lateral flow tests. Book as you would have done usually a PCR test and obviously don't come into school and follow the system already in place. In each kit, there is a waste bag for you to dispose of the kit safely to keep your household safe. As I've already mentioned, there is a privacy notice that will be given to all staff to read, which will help inform them as to whether they want to be opting into this. As I've said, data will be kept. The data we're keeping in school is listed here. Test kit data. When you collect your test, we will say the name of the person who's issuing it, the date of issue, the lot number off the box, the name of the person using the test, and you're going to acknowledge that that has been given to you. That's a register which we will keep. We're also going to keep a register where we are logging the results, and that's going to have your name, your date of birth, the test result, and when test was taken. Obviously, the online information, which you are required to log will be kept by a different system and the privacy notice explains how that information is used and stored. I've included here a lateral flow testing flow chart which hopefully gives you a basic breakdown of what to do. So it basically goes through where to collect the tests, how many basic tips on reading the YouTube sorry, watching the YouTube and reading the leaflet given with them, then about self-administrating, and it then just reminds you of what to do with each test result, whether it's void, negative or positive. And that's going to come as a separate document as well, just to give you something to refer to.